all of us should have the right, if we are competent to do so, to determine when and where and how we will end a suffering existence if that option is the only option open to us. We understand that this must be the rational act of a rational individual. The Final Exit Network organization is about five years old now is an outgrowth of the long-time Hemlock Society, which was started by Derek Humphrey, who wrote the book, Final Exit. The organization is a 501c3 corporation that is uh, run by about 100 volunteers from all around the United States. The organization has no full-time employees, but is composed of a group of people who believe that at some point there are people suffering from uh, long-lasting diseases that are causing them great suffering and that uh, there should be people available to counsel them on their options. I've been a caregiver for many years. I'm not a young person. I've seen a lot of tragedy in my life. I've lost my mother and my two sons and my husband. Uh, and my worst nightmare for myself is to be stuck in a nursing home for long periods of time uh, without my family. Uh, my immediate family is gone and there's not going to be anybody like myself to take care of me the way I took care of them. Take my place when I visited my uncle in hospital. He had been a cigarette addict all his life, and he was dying of cancer of the lung. Believe me, this was a heartbreak. And he begged me, under the assumption that I had some connection with deathly medications, to get some for him. I had to tell him it was impossible, that I knew of no such strategy, nor had I any practice in any such procedures, as I never have. And so I left him feeling very, very sad and looking forward to the day when doctor approved final exit is legal. I strongly believe that anyone should be entitled to their own desire to end their life if they wish. I was working for hospice at that time professionally. Hospice is a wonderful organization, but there are some people who need help. Hospice is not enough for, and I saw it day after day. Who among us is more vulnerable? Who among us is weaker and in more need of support than those who are suffering and dying at the end of life? The important thing I think that everyone should need to know about Final Exit Network is number one, we do not encourage anyone to end their life. And number two, we do not provide any of the equipment or medication for them to use in ending their life. And number three, we do not help. Uh, we, there's not, we, we do not do anything to help a person in their life. 20 years from now, as the baby boomers age and wither, having watched their parents age and wither and die, this will become a moral imperative. Uh, and we hope a legal right for all of us because society is not advanced. Society has no basic interest in keeping people alive longer than they wish to be kept alive. To have someone impose suffering on you is a moral dereliction of, of social responsibility one to another. We treat our animals uh, in a way that is conducive to compassion. It is illegal in 
every jurisdiction in this country to allow an animal to suffer needlessly, let alone to cause that suffering. And it will become imperative on each of us to understand the decency and basic honor and compassion are generated from allowing each of us to dictate this very critical end when that end is needed. Now that we can maintain a body almost indefinitely, even if they're comatose and not active, those who strongly believe in God are violating the God by maintaining that person. And how long this should go on indefinitely as has occurred with several examples in recent years. That's terrible. I would never, never think of forcing anyone to ignore their religious beliefs, but I don't think that I should have to give up my ethics and my sense of morality uh, in order to fit into someone else's uh, point of view. Political activism, I believe, is also the way in which social justice issues are advanced. In the civil rights era, it was not the leaders of the NAACP who vowed to deal with politicians in back rooms that made civil rights advancement happen. It, were the, it was those activists that marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, that sat in at lunch counters, that sat in the front of the bus, that brought the attention of this to all Americans and pressure to change laws. We believe that Final Exit Network provides this activism to our movement at this time. <laughs>